Hello there. Welcome back to another Spare Bedroom Podcast episode. Woo! We, woo, we have an amazing guest today. Uh, the very funny, the very powerful. J- should I go first name? Jacob. Jacob Andrews. Please. God, I cannot I, wait. I'm excited. Presidential speeches. Dude, you're going to be a great president. Yeah. As long as you keep the Sour Patch Kid like style. Yeah. I'm I'm voting for you. You want to be a part of my Kingsguard? I want to I want to be one of those like secret service men with like the earpiece. It's like watch out, watch out. Okay. You know, like if yes. you're walking, I'm like here they here they come here. You know, that's exactly what that's the guy I want to be. Position, but I'm gonna change that to like Kingsguard. You know, I'm a gonna way have, better name. Yeah, but you're yeah. gonna have like a sword as well. Because I think that's what when JFK got mm-hmm. like assassinated, it's because mm-hmm. like. You have Secret Service people that are, like, supposed to be protecting the president or whatever, uh-huh. but they're also, like, working for other – I don't even know if this is true – but other organizations. But, like, having seven people, uh-huh. preferably, like, governor sons and stuff to tie in, like, you know, relationships, having mm-hmm. them around you, their sole purpose is make sure you don't die. Yeah. Now I can get stuff done. Yeah, the old turtle shell, if you will. Protected at all costs. Yep. Yeah. And it's uh, – it, dude, because – we're not going to get trains unless, you know, we make. We got to bring the trains back. <laughs> I've been saying, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, He's dude, been saying this, man. Uh, dude, ever since. Oh, God. <laughs> ever since I've moved here, dude. Fucking. Oh, we've been talking about this train that's supposed to go from Atlanta mm-hmm. to, to Nashville. I moved here like seven years ago. That sounds like a great train. I know. <laughs> it's the two worst places to fucking drive because Nashville people just act like they got off of horse and buggy like yeah. two fucking years ago. Mm. Atlanta, whoever designed that city, I, I want to meet him. I have some fucking choice words. He, Bad. You put everything in one spot and mm-hmm. all the events start at the same time and they all end at the same time. Mm-hmm. That is why the, uh, it, uh, yeah. every time I drive into Atlanta, my face just like ugh. Ugh, just mad. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I like Denver. (laughs) All right, dude. Okay, let's start the intro with that one. Fucking Denver, Colorado. Hell yeah. Shit, I need to go to Denver, Colorado, man. It's a beautiful. This is some. This is our intro song. It's funky. It's kind of fun. All right. So let's get into our first question. This one. Oh man. Turn this actually down. Let's turn this down a little bit. Dude, that was first, sexy. Thanks, man. Hell yeah. Thanks, man. That is actually that's uh, Rose Gold by Jason Joshua and the Beholders. Hell yeah. Um, the first question actually comes out to you from uh, a friend. Okay, oh, a colleague. The God. first the first question comes out um, dedicated to them. I need to know about the moth joke. I have no idea what this is, but I was told to ask. This is this is where it's at. This is where it's at. (laughs) Who told is that Nicole or Jordan? Uh, Nicole. Okay. (laughs) So God, the moth joke. (laughs) Let me let me just explain what it means to me Uh before I go into the joke. Uh Uh-huh. The moth joke is my favorite joke that I've ever heard. Okay. Uh, It is a Norm MacDonald joke. Love Norm MacDonald. Fuck yeah. Okay. And it is it is a what do you like a, a tester of sorts? Mm. Like, uh, it, it can be for anything, but specifically like for romantic stuff. If I throw out the moth joke, uh huh, and they don't like the moth joke, oh, well, you're setting the stage. You you're letting them know this is kind of how my vernacular is. This is how I communicate, right? And, and if, if I'm like, I'm uh, I'm with you. I'm ready. Can you, you like, tell me the joke or what? How does okay. the joke go? God, it's it's such a dumb now, joke. Now, and now, am I supposed to laugh? Do you want me to laugh at this joke? Or am, is this what kind of joke is this? I, it's one of those. Uh, I'll just tell it to you. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so uh, there's this moth, right? Mm-hmm. Moth walks into a podiatrist's office. I may have actually heard this one. Keep going. He goes, uh, he goes, Doc, man, uh, I'm, I'm troubled. And the doctor, you know, early in the morning, he's like, oh. God, what does this moth do? Well, well, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Moth says, "Uh, what isn't wrong with me? Every day I I wake up and I meander here and there in a malaise. Mm -hmm. I I see my my three children and Doc, let me tell you, I only love two of them. 
The other one, every time I catch a glimpse into his face, for some reason, I, it feels as if I'm staring into a mirror. Oh. He has the same cowardice that I once had growing up. My middle child, whom I love, duh, died in the cold of winter, as many of us moths did, uh -huh. Doc. <laughs> My wife, uh -huh. Melisandria, I no longer love her either. <gasps> she thinks I don't know that she's sleeping with John oh. Butterfly. He's not even a moth. Oh. Down the street. Oh, no. Doc, sometimes I just wish I had, I had the courage to reach over mm -hmm. to that cocked and loaded shotgun that lays on the edge of my bed and in this hellish facade that I call a life. <laughs> I'm not doing good, Doc. <laughs> Doctor says, God, Moth, man. You know, you're, you're troubled. You're going through it, but... Uh -huh. But you should be seeing a psychologist. This is this is a podiatrist's office. Why'd you come here? He goes, Oh, the light was on. <laughs> it's, I can tell it I tell Bro. it I I try I tried to stick a little bit oh. closer to the source material on that one, but every time I tell it, I, I can, you can create <sighs> as long as you start with moth walks into a podiatrist's office and uh -huh. oh the light was on, you can fill in the blank with whatever in the bit. That's what That's I love. Fantastic, dude. A lot of the joke is like, how long can I keep this dumb story yeah. going? And a moth is talking to a doctor. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. So people come up and they're like, what's the moth joke? I'm like, oh you're, boy. You can't ready for this. Yeah, one. You're in, dude. I've had it. How long on. do you have? You know? You dude, know? I've I've made it go on for five to ten minutes at least. That makes it an even better joke. I made them Russian. In one of them. That's a good one. Yeah. I like that. Do you do the accent with it? Yeah. Just like, have fun. I can't do the accent. The Russian. He I, says hello. Hello. See, dog. that's good. That's really good, dude. I played Call of Duty. You yeah. Know? I played zombies. <laughs> I like all. All right. Next question. How do you feel about pirates, man? Oh. <laughs> How do you feel about them? You know, okay. Before we started this, I did say like I get mad at people that are like, I was born in the wrong era because mm -hmm. there's a lot of cool shit. Like I do love yeah. like short form content that, mm -hmm. that brain rots me. Mm -hmm. That being said, I'd make a killer pirate. <laughs> oh, dude. I'm all about the treasure, bro. Gold. <laughs> the treasure, dude. dude. I a, the fucking. Yeah. I bought a gold nugget bucket. From what? Yeah. From is that like from Bucky's or it, something? It was from a Shark Tank. <laughs> You're bullshitting. No. Is that no? Is that the pan yeah. where you go out there? Oh, yeah. bro. No, no, no. Oh, I think I, I think I've seen that episode. I'm not even bullshitting, dude. I, I saw. That's that. amazing. You're looking for treasure. Mm -hmm. Have you found any? I yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> the bounty. It doesn't matter. Dude, Have you I, heard of geocaching? Geocaching. No. Dude. I, well, I don't blame you. I just heard about it like uh -huh. not too long ago. Apparently there's this thing where people are going around and like hiding stuff in places and then they go on this app mm -hmm. and they'll like rate it from like level of difficulty uh -huh. and like people go out and try to find it and like, it's oh, like treasure, wow. it's literal treasure hunting. Oh dude, that sounds amazing. I know. That's I, a good date night. I just going around trying mm -hmm. to find treasure and shit. I mm -hmm. think there, there might be like some, I don't know, safety hazards. Yeah, there I, could be. It could be a setup. Oh yeah, this is good. We have gold at this one. Uh -huh. Like come but, out and. But that's the fucking beauty of it. No, especially if you're a pirate and all you have is a map and a cutlass. Oh, oh dude, dude, and you're just on the ocean, just fucking fighting waves. Yeah, man. Oh. I, dude, oh. I, I could I could LARP being a pirate yeah. any day. Like I don't. I, oh man, I'm ter I'm not gonna lie. The pirate mentality mm -hmm. is so appealing to me, but the way of life scares me. Like I'm too scared. I'm such a bitch with the ocean, man. I'm a bitch. And if there's mermaids, like back then, there's mermaids and shit calling out to me. Those were just. I'm done. I'm shark meat. I'm done. Those were just manatees. Uh, mermaid. <laughs> no, dude, Christopher Columbus for sure was fucking manatees. Like, really? Yeah, I think I, I saw that somewhere where he was talking about like the mermaids of the new uh -huh. world, but like they were manatees, bro. He was having sex with little sea cows, 
Yeah. Yeah. No, dude. It, uh, wow. The, Wasn't Christopher Columbus actually like a terrible human being? I heard that he like tricked the Native Americans by like a, what's it called? A blood moon or something like that one time. He was like, he, he told, I know this could, this is like a TikTok thing. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, see, just, so with no source, yeah, with no source on this, this one. <laughs> this happened. Yeah, write this down. If you guys have a test coming up, like be sure this, to quote this. This is some serious shit. I think it was like, Christopher Columbus, man, this is so bo- bogus. <laughs> that he was like, he w- was talking to the Native Americans or some shit, and he was like, man, my the white folk, we dying, we need more food and water and shit. And he's like, we can you guys give us some? And then they were like, fuck no. And he was like, my God will turn the moon red <gasps> in seven days if you don't. And he then you know we will fucking murder you all. And there were then it happened, and they're like, give them all the food, dude. I that's. Actually, I remember hearing something about that. Uh, like, okay. Like, just because they had a, like a good knowing of the stars, but I thought the Native Americans did too. Uh, I would think they would have, huh? I don't know. It, look, regardless, that started the golden age of piracy. You know, mm-hmm. coming over, we had we had three great movies based off of that uh, uh, non-fictional movies, mm-hmm. the Caribbean. Uh, I. The when you, when you talk about like being on the ship though, I I'm with you. Like I I don't like swimming in anything. I can't float. The doctors are perplexed. I like I I can't float. I can't float. It's I don't know what it, I think. I'm dense. I'm a dense. So you're saying it's all muscle. I think I was supposed to be like six one, and I got nerfed. I got compressed. And so like I'm more yeah I'm more chimpanzee than I am like Homo sapien. Yeah. And like. I've had people like, yes, you can. You just, you have to do the right form mm-hmm. in like a salt water because it like increases the buoyancy or whatever. Dude, the second someone puts their hands off my back, I sink. Again, the doctors haven't figured out a solution. I'm working with them, but I can't float. So I get that. But a pirate ship deck could be actually fairly progressive. That you had, you had uh, like, a lot of people were totally gay, you know? Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. You had pirates that, like... You well, had- it make, I make sense, dude. You're alone, adrift. Come you know, on, man. Come on. You're hungry. <laughs> you, got, you got some scurvy. All of a sudden, your, your, your lad Jason walks up, and he, his blunderbuss looks a little bit more plumper than usual, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, God damn, you know, what's good? we're out here, yeah. maritime law. Uh, <laughs> time law, dude. Oh fuck. No, but there was. Have you ever ever heard of? Oh my god. Bonnie? It's a fucking disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard of Anne Bonnie? Anne Bonnie? Yes. I don't think I have. I did a whole college uh, presentation over uh, the notorious female pirates of the golden age of piracy. Uh, How many? Two. It was uh it was Mary Reed and Anne Bonnie. Uh-huh. And uh they were both cross dressers. Uh and so when they got on the ship mm-hmm. their ship, a lot of the people just thought that they were dudes because they cursed like men, they could out drink the men, they had no idea. Uh and what's crazy about that is they ended up on the same ship and Anne Bonnie developed a crush on Mary Reed thinking she was a dude and Mary Reed developed the crush on Ann Bonnie thinking she was a dude. And like, they had this, like, you know, like a meeting of sorts and they were talking and they were like both, that's how they both figured out that they were both girls on a ship or whatever. And then Ann Bonnie got pregnant by the, the captain. Like, I'm sure that that would have raised some alarms to people. They were like, Holy shit, dude. Yeah, yeah no. And uh, misgendering in the pronouns thing. <laughs> I mean, what is going on here? You know, what is, what? no, dude. And, and like you had, uh, uh, and Bonnie, like when she got control of a ship, she said to her crew, whenever they were raiding, if you rape anyone, she was going to cut off your dicks and throw you overboard, but you could marry them and like bring them onto the ship kind mm. of thing. And I was like, that is sick. Mm. I did a whole like presentation. Dude, I love pirates. Dude, that's crazy because in my mind, I'm thinking pirates, they got the fucking long beards, mm-hmm. right? They got the peg leg. Mm-hmm. They ain't, they got like 
What is it? Way. Fucking uh, what's on their face from the fucking gun gunpowder shit? But it wasn't it. I thought it was something else. So like some black smoke or shit. They're all dirty. Yeah. No one's brushing your teeth. No one's. I don't think. I don't fucking know. No, dude. No one was brushing their teeth. So, with everyone smells like shit. Hell yeah. I'm like, man. They must have mixed in. So, do you think they're like cutting their hair, or like how do you? No, nah, dude. Uh, like they're made different, huh? They're just fucking man. Like, where do you think peg leg came from? I'm just saying. I I come here. I just kind of drop little. Dude, that's actually really interesting. I've never thought about that. Yeah. All right, next thing. Hold on, we're running out of time. We got to get on to the next thing. Irish goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it saves you time in the long run. In the, so I, we both believe in the Irish goodbye. It, it sounds like. No, go ahead. I I love the Irish goodbye. I think it a it, it definitely saves time. It saves me emotional time. It's it's just. Um, if I have to leave, it's it seems like the correct way to do it. It's just tougher to do in the smaller of the group. Yeah. It would be mm -hmm. like trying to Irish. Like if I were just with you and like, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like I'm going to go to the bathroom. Yeah. I just leave. <laughs> That's tough. That'd be bad. Yeah, that'd be bad. I feel like you can Irish goodbye when you're in a group over seven. Because then there's enough like going on. Great you, rule of thumb. Yeah. Yeah. Great rule of thumb. I don't know. People can write that down. I, I the, think that's a good idea. I think that's a great idea, dude. But like, I, yeah, because it kind of cuts out the intimacy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Like it, yeah. And plus, like, I don't know. There are just sometimes, like, if there's too many people, I just hate doing the whole like, oh, I'll see ya, and then like, you know, because someone wants to say something, and now I'm going down the line, mm -hmm. and now, now I'm like. God. Uh, it's been like 30 minutes since I said that I was going to leave. I got to get the hell out of oh. here. Or it could also just be like, oh, I'm having a panic. At the <laughs> <laughs> I got to leave right now. I got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah but like in a cool yeah. way. <laughs> Dude, I Dude, have cool panic attacks. I, I love the Irish goodbye, and I think that's a great rule of thumb. Man. Mm -hmm. All right, dude. Now, how do you feel about this? Um, How do you feel about dark humor? Do you Are you uh, like a... Because I, I prepped some clips here. As you can see, we have Crate Climb and Russian Taxi and Working Out are kind of dark humor. You know, it depends on whether or not you're into that thing. Are you going to show me like someone getting decapitated? Or no, something? no, no. It's not decapitated. Uh, yeah. No, no. But uh, here's, here's, for example, Crate Climb right here. Here's Crate Climb. <laughs> You see these guys, it's it, it's shit like this. Where it's like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> they put it in slow motion. Yeah. Oh, Stuff that, like that. That is so good, dude. And parkour people like that. I What are you doing? I have hyperhidrosis. <laughs> Dude. My, my oh fuck me, man! It, it, it's a very serious condition. It is. It affects five percent of Americans. Actually. Wait, hold on, wait, wait, wait. How many? How many? Five percent. I saw that. I can. No, I actually could completely believe that. No, dude, that's yeah. why one of my biggest fears. Shaking hands. Yeah, goddamn right. <laughs> Going to church. Everybody shake people's hands around you. Say good morning, and you're like, "Fuck, man!" Yeah, they'll do and one of those. You they, know? They're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, not, it's a condition. Five percent have it. <laughs> like, I'm so, yeah, I'll, I'll, dude, I used to say like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> like, <laughs> As you're going in for it, <laughs> like the little, yeah. and uh, I'm like, oh, I'm little is that? Mm. I can't climb. I, uh, oh, like rock climbing? I have to have so much chalk. Mm -hmm. And even then, like, I feel the, the You're chalk. making biscuits mm -hmm. in your hands? Dude, there's just clumps underneath me. Just clumps of <laughs> chalk. And I'm like, D dude, you can get surgery on it, allegedly. Oh, you apparently. Shit. I want to do that, eventually. Oh. But, like, anytime I see stuff like that, my hands start, like, getting really bad mm -hmm. anytime like someone's on a skyscraper or something like the one-handed hold yeah oh and i hate pe seeing people die hot take maybe yeah but it is <laughs> when you see that there's a part of you that's like you know what are you what are you doing man th that's thinning the herd at that yeah. point it's it natural selection at its finest here's yeah. the next one here's the next one this is a guy working out. I'd love the scream on this one. That's why I think I like this one so much. <laughs> oh, 
but oh. oh, not the girl. Not the girl. <laughs> no, bro. I would immediately perk up. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Blood coming out of my mouth. Uh, your eyes are all fucking red. <laughs> I'm a big strong man. <laughs> It's like, sir, your your blood vessel <laughs> popped in your eye. So do you want to get dinner after this? <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, have you seen the video of that dude that uh, he made a homemade parachute? <laughs> oh, dude, no. you're talking about brutal shit. He, he made a homemade parachute and it's his buddy like recording him. Dude, that parachute was probably about the width of this little table right here. Uh huh. And he jumps off of like a 20 story building and you just see him like it had no resistance. He just <laughs> fell and hit the smack and his buddies like, like you just it yeah. doesn't make a sound. Yeah. Oh, he's just recording them and he records them smack on the ground. The dude doesn't even move. I'm more. I think it was a murder. We got to watch that video coming up. We're yeah. going to watch that video coming up. All right. Your, Your true colors. Have you guys ever wanted to know what it's like to not be like a honky, to be a white little mayonnaise man? Your true colors allows you to go to a photographer and take a picture of yourself to see what you would look like as races such as uh, black, Asian, Belgium. Belgium. <laughs> Fuck it. Belgium. Fuck it. Yeah. Our Antarctic Eskimo. Huh? Did, and Islander. Now, sadly, this company was closed down in 2008. The Colorblind Community Foundation of America did not like the idea because they don't see race. They don't see color in general. Mm -hmm. Ever since the invention of the chroma glass glasses by Google, not sponsored. They're able it's to back. use the beautiful Your True, True Colors experience. Yeah. Be sure you go to the website, yourtruecolors.com. Use code SPARE at checkout for 15 to 25% off. To 25% off. That's right, baby. Limited resources apply. Restrictions and friendly use, apparently. And it, you know, it'll it'll do roll. It'll roll all the shit right now. It's rolling right now. I'll put it in post. Not all, available in Hawaii. Y'all not available? <laughs> Your true colors. Go today and sign up. Back and cooking. Now my no these these are on my notes. I have hard hitting topics. Okay. This is to really break down. It would have been weird if you just put topics. Yeah. That would have been kind of cringe. Mm -hmm. okay. I had to make it bold, italics, and underlined too. You put so it in italics. <laughs> God, I put this is professional, dude. I should have brought like Miller High Life. <laughs> Brought a champagne of beers. I'm just drinking Miller Lite like a fucking peasant here. Oh my god, Miller, uh, mm. Miller Lite. Uh, okay, uh, I, I can't get into that right now. Hold on, I'm just yeah. stay, stay with me. Hold on. Now, the, now these are personal. These are you ready? Mm -hmm. What are your goals in stand up comedy? Be I asked that because I heard that you, you know you want to be a stand up comedian. So how? Mainly just what, what do you think about it? What's your goals? Um, I, to be fair, I never really, I never really thought, I always thought I would have like an independent platform where I just like am a goofy, silly guy and also do like history stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I've always loved stand up. Like I, I grew up just listening to stand up all the time, me and my mom. So like, in every city I go to, I go, like, I like going to the open mics to see, like, what, I don't know, it's, it's the raw form of whatever city that I'm in. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't gone up on, I used to do improv. I did improv for, like, three years, did some work for, like, UCB in New York, and did mm -hmm. some stuff for Improv Chattanooga here. But, like, the difference between improv and stand-up is, like, if you're bombing in improv, which I have, you're bombing with, like, a whole cast of characters you're bombing as a team you know it, it's right. beautiful and that's if you're bombing and stand up it's just you brother just you up there with that microphone how can you get them back so i'm not gonna lie like i have a lot of like just jokes written down yeah like on a, jokes tight tens that i've like mm -hmm. set up just in case and i think i will do it eventually mm -hmm. it's just a matter of Whenever I feel, uh, feel like I want to, I, I do stuff when I want to do it and uh -huh. it, it might just be split second. I might just be at an open mic and be like, I've nice, prepped enough. Nice yeah. I'll go, I'll go up there. That's right. fine. But usually whenever I'm going, it's like a decompress. Like I'm trying to like, mm. I had a bad day. I just want to laugh. I just want to like sit there and chill. Mm -hmm. 
uh, so like I think adding that pressure mm-hmm. would make it to where I don't want to like make it to where I don't like it anymore. So I'm trying to like just be as gradual as possible. Yeah. Take step by step. Eventually I'll go up there. I'll do it. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. It, I'll, I'm going to bomb. I've seen, and that's the thing. And I, th- I feel like you hear a lot of comedians say that, like you're going to bomb, but like mm. you hear them and you're like, yeah, but not you. Like you, you're not going to bomb. Cause you're actually really good dude. I've seen people go in there that I see kill 80, 90% of the time, but there's that 10% mm-hmm. where they just bomb. And you're like, and y- 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 cause you've seen them do well. And so you're just like, how did that happen? You know, sometimes yeah. it's the same jokes. So it, different crowd. I feel, I feel like even if you bomb, if you, a good bombing story brings out so much laughter and joy in me. Yeah. Like if you go up there and bomb, that's funny. It's so funny. I and mean, it may not be funny, like to the people in the crowd, you know, cause you're bombing, but like to your peers and your, whoever you go, when you go backstage, you're like, that was fucking, that was, that's hilarious. You know, that's a good time. Yeah. And then maybe you can use it, uh, you know, you, in like a, a stand up set or something. You can talk about, man, I bombed the fuck out of this club and yeah. wherever. You bombed it. <laughs> <laughs> I bombed it. They weren't laughing. They got there just as So well. I fucking bombed them. <laughs> How do you feel like uh, comedy is evolving? I feel like when I, for example, in my perspective, stand or comedy has been as I've grown up. I used to watch like George Lopez. That was like, oh, I found that funny. Mm-hmm. Then I started watching like Conan O'Brien. I started watching Jimmy Fallon. I started watching like late night hosts mm-hmm. and things like that. And I was like, okay, that's kind of like a version of comedy, or they have to do like a monologue or SNL. I loved watching SNL. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I feel like now it's become. I've really gotten more into stand up comedy watching a bunch of specials just because Netflix, I mean, they put them out fucking everywhere all the time. Because Netflix doesn't care, dude. They let you, they let you do whatever. They, yeah. it, like, I do think, I think what is also evolving about comedy, uh, and a lot of people are like so against this, but I think you can view it as like a, a, a way to sharpen your sword. When people talk about cancel culture and stuff, Mm -hmm. like there are some comedians that are just like, oh, I just can't say anything now. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's true. I think, well, one, your job is to be funny. So if the audience isn't laughing, it's not a matter of the audience. Like you got to get the audience laughing. Yeah, that's your job. And there are ways to talk about subjects that would be cancelable or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and make them funny. And I think that brings out like the best of comedians yeah. when they're like, okay, how can I make this funny though? Like I'm going to talk about something hard hitting. Uh-huh. Like how am I able to, to not come across as an asshole? Maybe they could get away with more back in the day, but I think the comedians that come out of that are so much more polished and refined where mm-hmm. they're like, no, actually I can still say like, you know, you have, You have like Theo Vaughn saying stuff where I'm like, you can't say that, but like, no, he's uncancelable. Like he, like there's, there's a way to talk about stuff. Yeah. I, I think you're a hundred percent right. I think, uh, what other, I I feel like I maybe, do I know enough enough standup comedians? I don't know. Maybe I know Anthony Jeselnik. I remember one of his specials. I remember being like, holy shit this is so this is could be this could be so over the top yeah. but it was i found it to be so funny uh tom Segura, I lo- tom Segura, i think is my favorite mainly because i love his podcast but he, he has some jokes in there where i'm like damn you know yeah. but it's amazing when you ride the line or if you can ride the line and make them laugh beautiful it's so good and, and so whenever i see comedians throw their hands up and they're like i can't do it i'm like then yeah. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. Then you're not funny. <laughs> like yeah. you, you I'm sure you're funny to other, other people, but like, you can't be the best of the best without figuring out ways to work around. Even like back in the day, dude, you had, uh, a Lenny Bruce mm. who was getting arrested at like comedy clubs for some of the shit he was saying, because like back then we were fairly more like Christian and like, uh, uh like any kind of religious talk and shit like that. That was mm. the cancel. Like that, mm. that would get you canceled. Now it's just shifted in a way. But like, yeah, 
I don't see any comedians getting arrested for no stuff. Like, no, like it's, mm. it's changed. And from that you have like, I think it's amazing what like Bill Burr has done. Bill Burr has just, like a puzzle piece fit into what whatever generation he is in he is going to be funny uh or find a way to be funny of course there's going to be people, family dude good show like some good show and some people aren't going to like him and that's fine but you don't yeah. see bill burr like like yeah he doesn't seem like he comes out a lot either he seems like he's i feel like most of these people are kind of a uh, recluse i mean the last i heard about bill burr he was he was like a helicopter pilot or he got his pilot yeah. license or some shit but i'm like i don't know what bill burr does mm-hmm. as in like day to day or i don't see him on fucking snapchat or like you know what i'm saying he's yeah. not like posting so uh he i don't know like but he's man i love it like he does his own thing would you ever be like a writer you think would you ever write for if snl if uh what's that guy's the the main guy uh that runs snl oh uh lorne michael lorne if he if you like audition and he's like i don't see you as like talent on screen but you could write would you do that shit yeah yeah no i totally do something like that uh i'm a terrible writer though i would tell yeah dude i can't get my thoughts onto paper whatsoever so like i'd tell him that Uh uh-huh i'd be like i might not be a writer i might be like a sayer (laughs) like i'll come up and and like say something to you that i think's funny but like, I'm not gonna give you my chicken. Sc- I'm not gonna give you chicken scratch handwriting and have yeah, you yeah. decipher it like hieroglyphs. I I can't, dude. Hold on. Are, are you think it's are, is it really that bad? This is how I hold a pencil. Is it really? Yeah. Why, man? Out of spite. Uh, my kindergarten teacher used to try to like get me to hold it right, and I remember just three wide ones. Yeah. No, it's terrible for your fingers. Yeah, that doesn't. I can't. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, man. Dude, you, you, you can't, I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> All right, man. I can't read cursive. Oh, my, my who mo- fucking uses cursive, man? My mother, she sends the, me letters all the time. In cursive? Yes. She'll, she'll send me Dear Jacob, and that's all I can read. And, and I, it's like this whole, she used to write me letters throughout college, which is so sweet. I love my mom. Mm. But they would all be in cursive, and I just had to be there, and I'd be like, I bet this is a sweet letter. I bet this is, I bet she's saying she loves me. There ain't no yeah. telling. She could be like, we're in a hostage situation. Please come get me. Why haven't you written us back? <laughs> Just be like, oh, oh. love you, mom. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never learned cursive. Oh, fuck me, man. That's fucked up. I, I, I don't need it. To be oh. fair, whenever I was trying to learn Spanish, I had to relearn English. Because they'll be like, in Spanish, they'll be like, oh, it's like an adjective in English. And I remember being like, fuck, I have no idea. Man, adjective. I'm telling you, if, if you gave me, or if you were just like, put this uh, semicolon in the correct place. Like gun to my head, put this semicolon or you die. Can I have another? Yeah. Give me, I- give me something else. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm really lost on that one. Give me like, I, I, yeah, like. Uh, that's like an old Patrice O'Neill joke. Where the he, restaurant? Yeah, spell restaurant. Uh, dude, I fucking love that joke. Spell restaurant. <laughs> I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> he goes, spell, uh, spell February. Uh, <laughs> I can't. It's restaurant February and, uh, fuck, I forget the third one. There are just some words that you come across where yeah. even when you write it out and you spell it right, you you know, you'll look at it and you're like, I don't. I, that doesn't look yeah. right. It, yeah, and then know. the more you stare at it, the more it doesn't oh. look right. No, I, I hate it. I wish I had the autocorrect and I wish it would just, it would stop showing the red line underneath. It would just change it. You know, I'm not going to get that shit right. No. What are you fucking showing me? I know I didn't get it right. <laughs> just fucking fix it, dude. I don't, I, after the first four letters, you should know that I don't know how to spell this. Yeah, you know, if something wrong is coming up. All right, here we go. The next question. All right. So, as I've, um, uh, I listened to podcasts on about with comedians and it sounds like, I don't know, but it sounds like they do. If they want to start being a stand up comedian, they got to start touring or you got to get like an agent or something so you can go do different clubs and actually make money. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like that could ever be on your horizon? Do you think you would want to do that kind of thing? Uh, I feel like that's one of those things like you have the opportunity to do because mm. I feel like you start out, you just go to open mics. 
Uh, here you get like five minutes for open mics, which is pretty decent. Like, because when I was in Denver, a lot of the clubs were just doing like three minute sets. Oh, and it's packed. There's people lined up ready. Yeah, there's like there's a lot of comedians nowadays, huh? Mm-hmm. A lot of people think they're funny. Doing yeah, and a lot of people are funny. Yeah, a lot of people have yeah. some bad friends that <laughs> are yeah them that they're very you can do it, man. I don't. I would never do that shit. Never. Never? Uh-uh. Would you do improv? Mm. So you have a group, it makes it a little I, easier. I, I would do improv, but as long as I don't got to do it for people. But dude, because I have such a fear of public speaking. Really? Bad. When did that? Bad. Like my hyperhidrosis starts coming out. Yeah. It starts going down the microphone. It's like, I'm holding it, bro. I'm, I'm not into it. Dude. I, public speaking is not my thing. You have the little shake of the microphone. Oh, you start, you start fuck, man. It yeah. I'm not doing that. Voice quivers a bit. And then if you start bombing on top of that, oh, oh that, I know. I, I have such a great respect for him because I can't do that shit. Oh, I whenever would. someone's bombing for five minutes straight, I'm like, how do you do it? That's a strength in and of itself, just to stand up there, yeah, and be like, God. <laughs> but at that, y'all point, are going to listen to this. <laughs> at, at that point, you just start throwing yeah. out haymakers. Yeah, like, if you're bombing that much, just like. Throw out anything you can. Have fun with it. Norm McDonald used to bomb. Yeah. And if he bombed, he would go and wait at the door and shake people's <laughs> hands as they they left or whatever. Yeah. He would just, like just as a way of like, ah, eh, whatever. Like, <laughs> that's fine. If he did good, he'd just go and smoke a cigarette and be, oh. <laughs> be that, like, that's whatever. a fucking great attitude. I feel like that's a, like I don't want to say the only attitude, but that's like one of the probably the best attitude about it you could have. Is if you're going to bomb, dude, make it fun. Well, Have yeah. some enjoyment because I'm sure the ride home and when you're sitting at home, it's like, fuck, that was depressing as shit. But in the moment while you're still at the club, shake everybody's hands. Yeah. You know, dude, I, good time. I, I had a moment like that. My first improv show. So you do it. You did them in front of people. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I, okay. I, I did for a while there. And uh, my first improv show, I forget. <sighs> I got paired up with someone and it, like it was it wasn't even that bad, mm-hmm. but like it wasn't the reaction that I was used to. Mm-hmm. And like I just got into my head. And so the show ended and I remember I'm driving back and I was just like because uh, I had all my friends there and stuff and my friends loved it. Like mm-hmm. I have good friends, you know, they were like, that was awesome. And I was just like, dude, it was the my like third thing that I was doing. Mm-hmm. So I had done good at the beginning and at the end. It was like. Just this middle segment. Mm-hmm. I forget what the game was even. Uh, and it was just, I said something and it was just crickets. And I was oh. like, ooh, dude, when you can hear silence, oh. you're like, oh, God. I'm so nervous right now. But there's those. There's those that are like, that sucks. Uh-huh. The second one I did I actually had a dude come up to me after the show and was like, you were my favorite person up there. Like you did really good. And dude, I like started crying. Yeah. Tried to kiss him. <laughs> I, dude, I, you get, you get horny. Yeah. Come here, man. Hey, come here. <laughs> Give me a kiss. You're not European style. Come here. <laughs> Give me them luscious looks. Time for some action, you know, oh, if, you, yeah. if you want to start making out with them. It's just time for some action. I Dude, I couldn't, I couldn't ever do that shit. <laughs> Give him a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like improv is, um, I took a, did I ever take, I took like a drama, I took a drama class in high school, but it wasn't like theater. Mm. We learned about improv and then we learned about like fucking movies, Alfred Hitchcock and that type of shit and uh, stage directions and that kind of thing. And when we learned about improv, I remember and still feel like it's, um, you gotta be, way quick on your feet and i feel like also if i'm on improv and i'm like and i'm like in the groove you know and i hit you with a line and it's not a yes or no or whatever the rule is and i'm like leading you uh-huh. and you kind of get something stale back i'm like hey man hey you fuck- you know what we're doing right now right <laughs> what the fuck is that no, and so you're then, fucking me up yeah no that 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 is a, that is annoying oh, oh that, but like would you act i did acting you did acting. Uh, yeah, but Evelyn, my my agent, God, the old hag. The I, fuck is this? You got an agent? Technically, if that's what, if she's still living and breathing, she she like. She, Evelyn is such a fucking no, dude. Come on. I mean, she's a nice lady, but God, 
she would send me stuff and she'd be like, hey, can you audition for this role? And I'd be at work and I'd be like, yeah, what time do you need an audition put in? She'd be like, can you do something in like five minutes? What? And I'd go, no, no, <laughs> no, Evelyn. Like I, I have stuff to do. Like I can't set up a recording like and then memorize she, the script, I'd build look, the character. And then you look at the character <laughs> and it's like we're looking for uh, people who look like NFL linebackers. That's one that I got. I was flattered. I was like, Evelyn, thank you. Like, but what the hell? How old is Evelyn? Dude, uh, 150. Uh, Her and Biden like founded the country together. Uh, Dude, she she sent me one. I remember I went to this audition, dude. Oh, fuck. And there was this long hallway of uh, just like people reading their lines. And the first Mm -hmm. thing I noticed when I turned the corner and looked at all these people is, I am the only fucking honky white person there, dude. Everyone else is is either black or Mexican, and I was just like, I don't know. Honky is such a good term, man. It's my favorite term for white people, dude. Honky, honky is, is such a good term. It just rolls off the tongue. Yeah. Uh, and I, oh. I remember like being like, okay, like, and I look down and I I'm reading my lines and, and I'm yeah. like, okay, hey, man. <laughs> No, I don't care. But, but like, I remember walking into the audition and the casting director or whatever uh-huh. going like Jacob. And then she went. <laughs> no, and no. She looked back down and she was like, oh, OK, go ahead. And I remember I went up to like shake her hand and she was like looking down. You know, whenever I did that, and uh, so that they, there was like two seconds, you know, and I. Oh, had like, and then she looks up, and yeah, right, you're just standing above her. No, no, no. I was uh, like pulling back. Oh she no! She looked up, and then she did that, and saw that I pulled, and it was like, and I was like, okay. <laughs> and I, oh fuck, man! I went up and then it's like your fate depends on it in that room in that moment. It's like, am I gonna get the role? Oh. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes if they're kind of interested, you'll read it once and they'll be like, okay, uh, they'll be like, maybe uh, let's try to read it this way. Let's do that. I read it one time. They went, thanks. And I was like, you want it? They were like, nope, you're good. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I had to just walk out of there. Fuck, man. I don't know if I have that, re- like that, that in me, man. Ah, it's fine. I walked out and I went, I got it. <laughs> Everyone went, hey, man. Everyone <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, fuck, man. man. Dude, I, I couldn't do that. I want to I want to direct films. I think that would be like the ultimate best job on the planet. Without a doubt, being able to direct films, it's without a doubt, like, why would you want to do anything else? That it's sounds a lot of power. That sounds amazing. A lot of power. Mm-hmm. Telling people what to do. That sounds you, great. You got to keep people in line. That sounds amazing, dude. My roommate does like short films and stuff like really? that. Really? So like I've seen- Who's your him, roommate? Uh, his name's Chance Lindsay. Uh, he he entered into the, fe- or not music festival, the film festival that was here uh, mm-hmm. for his documentary called Kai Life. It was actually really good. Uh, so I've seen- Look him. Out Wild? I think that I have, I have a sticker of one of the film. I went to one of the film festivals and those were kind of like nature esque. They had some kind of like nature thing on it. Like uh, the film had to be something. It was they were all of like someone diving like a like not um, what's a free dive, I guess, or like scuba diving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had stuff of people like in their fucking paragliding, people biking. It was all outdoors type shit. I don't know if that one was it. But no, he well, he did it over uh, this guy that uh, he does the Chattajack every year the fuck? and like that's like a the a, a big like kayak race or something okay. like that mm-hmm. uh and it was great so yeah i've seen him go from roommate chance mode to director yeah chance it, two totally different <laughs> people dude because like, i love it you gotta make sure people especially like when i'm on set because uh-huh. i like chatting you you would be on set yeah what would you do what was your thing oh uh, i help i helped him out when i could with audio because like that mm-hmm. was his big thing like he needed yeah. Someone who knew how to do audio. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, I was hel- hold, I was just holding the boom mic, uh, yeah. Yeah. and then I'd help him with the editing process a little bit. But I'm colorblind as shit, so whenever it comes, you're to- lying, no, man. So like when it comes to now, how much time do we have left? Okay, we got to break into the colorblind. Really? Are you gonna- are you are you fucking with me? Or are you being for real right now? Point at something and be like, what color? <laughs> Should I right, well, t- tell me like how is it? It's- is it like black and white? 
No, I wish. Oh, oh, you wish? I wish. It would be so much easier to explain. Yeah, and, that's probably okay. That's probably a good. Point. Like, if I was just like Donkey from Shrek, <laughs> which I relate to that, the, when he's like, blue flowers, red thorns. <laughs> God damn it, I'm colorblind. I had a friend in high school who was colorblind, but his, his was, it seemed like he was bullshitting sometimes because he would be like, sometimes um, red seemed like brown mm -hmm. or green was something else. And I remember. I was just like, that, I think you're fucking lying to me. The, what, it, what is it for you? Is it real? The best way I've heard it described uh, uh -huh. is, so when you see green, uh -huh. you can see typically seven different shades of that green. I agree. I can only see three. So, you know, when you go to like the Home Depot or the Lowe's and there's like all those colors, like your wife is pissed right now, honey, <laughs> is it eggshell or whatever? And you're like, it's it's gray <laughs> dude that saves you some trouble then huh or what do you think is it kind of annoying having to explain it and shit uh well it, the only time i'm like yeah. damn I'm, I'm colorblind you know those yellow blinking lights uh and then the red blinking lights when you're driving oh okay and yeah, the yeah. red ones you stop yeah. at and yeah the yellow ones you go i can't tell the fucking difference between the two so i have uh, to just go off of what the person in front of me is doing. Yeah, whoever flinches first, you kind of I used you're judging to, that. <laughs> I used to just stop uh -huh. at all of them, <laughs> and then I got really anxious because people would honk at me. <laughs> so now I just kind of go slowly creeping through. And pray, <laughs> I oh. pray for the best. Uh, you know, it's not that bad. You know, or oh, you can't see sunsets like of the. Come on, I don't care about no fucking <laughs> sunset. I don't care about the gold. That's all. I care about the gold. I care about treasure. All right, here's here it is. Here it is. This I'm gonna show you. This next two videos. We you know President Bush. I don't want to show you that one. I want to see that. Okay. All right. All right. This is. I just love this video so much. I thought we could make fun of it. I call upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers. Thank, Thank you. you. Now watch this drive. God damn. Ooh. God. If that doesn't make you... That was a president. <laughs> that was a president, dude. I criticize my, you know, oh. as much as the next guy, but something about that makes me want to put a fucking star-spangled star banner wrapped around my <laughs> neck, a fucking bald eagle. I want one of those flags hanging outside of my house with, like, you know, the flag or whatever right by the stairs leading up. Oh. Oh, just a, so fucking... Just fucking yeah. saluting all the time. So, I, dude, sometimes, especially like if like a British person is like talking about America, dude, I get so patriotic. Yeah. I can't help. Olympics comes around, dude. That is such a good point. On Olympics, we're the fucking best, dude, dude. I get hyped up. I get, yeah, I get yeah. very like, like war hungry. I like if mm -hmm. we lose, I'm like, yeah, but like, what if we drop the sun on you? <laughs> <laughs> like, I get, I get very like, uh, you know, ah! I, yeah, that's kind of like an eagle. <laughs> yeah, dude, I I think it's the most patriotic thing to uh, criticize the country. I think Thomas Jefferson said that that could be com a complete lie. <laughs> but like I criticize the hell out of it. And I, one of the things that like I feel like it comes from a form of patriotism where I'm like, I see other countries with stuff uh -huh. that we don't have. And it makes me like. You don't deserve that stuff. Yeah. We, I, I think we should have the best stuff just as like a spite, out of spite mm -hmm. to Europe. Like, oh, yeah. you guys think you have the best healthcare? We should have the best healthcare plus, you know? We should take it from them. That's how I get. That's, that's, how, that's, probably, that's probably a little too like Viking, I think, mentality of like raid. But then I'm like, yeah. we deserve it, you know? <laughs> Load up on the boats. <laughs> We're going to do some pillaging. Oh, I fucking We're going to take all of their uh, their fucking Ozempic. I love that fucking mentality. Oh, Let's Chuck. take it. Oh. Have you seen this? I, I don't know. I saw this on TikTok. And since, you know, since of our job, I thought this would be so hilarious to play. If this is, this is live television yeah. on ESPN. This shit is fucking hilarious. Charles Barkley. Going around him, he just banging and banging and banging. When a guy's banging you, <laughs> you don't you spin off of him. What? Those are the worst defenders to play against, actually. Because if you can feel their body, uh, come on. Come on. 18 man. points for Joe. <laughs> Only nugget in double figures. Dude, look how it's a three-minute video. <laughs> There's so I, dude, I try anything to play at a basketball game. 
That's good beer. Hey, I, I took that stuff they put in horses. I had them stick it at me a couple times. What? What? <laughs> Admitting the steroids. Dude. Oh, God, this is fucking... Okay, I think there's... One thing you got to worry about, man. Them young boys... Them young boys coming. Three games. Dude, imagine, like... Because, like, do you ever run, like, the audio board at work or whatever? Uh-huh. No. I, I I do audio sometimes, dude. Every time Chuck started talking, I would like have my <gasps> finger over his mic, and I'd be like, "I'm gonna have to cut it, dude." I would uh, I'd have be like, "Cut his mic, cut oh his mic." God. Please. Oh Holy my god! Please. Oh my god! Fucking shit! That's hilarious. Chuck, he imagine him doing anything other than being on TV. Like he was born for it. Like even if he wasn't a basketball player, he would have found a way to yeah. like, be on television somehow, some way. <sighs> I love that uh, TNT is like the only. The only show you can uh, watch when it comes to like like post game basketball because yeah. I don't know what the producer it, the producers must be chill as yeah. all hell because like they're just like you they, guys got it you got it <laughs> you, you know they just put they're like Ernie you know uh-huh. try to steer him back into course uh, bring it back they're just yeah. in there bring him back bring him back he's going too far yeah. and, and Ernie's like hey Chuckster <laughs> eighteen games winning ten <laughs> losses let's see how the L A Lakers. <laughs> So talk this over the one point the rosebush have you guys ever looked at your granddad's uh schlong and or penis and thank god that is way too hairy pop pop boy do we have a service for you what would that service be the rosebush it's a brick and mortar in buck tank wyoming buck tank wyoming <laughs> population of three of three <laughs> If you're one of the three people in Buck Tank, Wyoming that are over the age of 60 with a hairy little genitalia, come down to the rose bush where you can. You can get your genitals waxed or shaved. If you're a grandparent, maybe you're over the age of like 70, and you feel like you've kind of lost your, your oomph, you know? Maybe you're trying to get on the scene again. You're trying to get up under somebody, but you're a little self-conscious about your puke. This has you covered. Go down, you know, you're in the nursing home. You see a little fella, a mm. young snapping man at a the age of whipper snapper, a 65 year old, mm. man, and you're just like, God, I gotta, I gotta look young again. Uh-huh. You go down to the rose bush. You, we have two, maybe three. It's the three people in Buck Tank, Wyoming, uh-huh. that are licensed professionals that will take care of you. And for if you use our, your code spare, spare, you get not only 15 percent off, but if you add 25 percent off <laughs> and say spare and wink at the person they will not only give you that for 15 to 25 percent off you get their special deal yeah they'll uh, tell you what <laughs> i'm pretty sure you can put the pieces together so if you have a pop pop or nan nan out there yeah harry yeah, that's a great point if you feel like you have a grandparent and you, they're not they're not experiencing life like they once were and you you can see it's kind of depreciating. You, you want them to get back out there. Maybe they lost, you know, their their spouse or their special someone. This is how they can get back out there. Get out there, old people. Start fucking. <laughs> Fuck. This is the special skills uh, huh? part of my acting resume. That okay. I didn't figure out that I had until about two years after getting into acting, and I just uh-huh. happened to look at it. So this is what my mother has taken upon herself to uh, write about her son uh, and what he can do. I am apparently proficient in archery, (laughs) uh, badminton, baseball, basketball, billiards slash pool player, bowling, canoeing, cycling, fishing, football, golf, hacky sack, no, you're not. That's bullshit. That one's actually pretty fucking tough. Uh, the rest of them, you're like, your mom's probably like, yeah, he can do that shit. But that one. Like, she's never seen me pick up a bow in my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sucked at football, dude. I, I, I also like I, I've never canoed really either. Ice skating. I went ice skating one time. I love ice skating. Jet skier. Jump rope. Jump rope, double dutch. You can dutch. do that. You can do that one, dude. Double dutch? <laughs> double dutch? Double dutch? <laughs> Are you kidding? Hey, dude, lacrosse. I hate lacrosse. Lacrosse. Really? Dude, no. Oh, I love lacrosse. You love lacrosse? Dude, I mean, where you well, that's probably, that's, love is way too strong of a word. You vibe with lacrosse? I mean, I would play it. 
I didn't offer it in my high school. I would have played lacrosse, I think. But am I going to go buy a ticket to go see a game? No. 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 Exactly. No. I don't, I, no. I don't think I've ever even had the urge to, I don't know, maybe if they fought more like in hockey. Yeah, so, dude. Throw the gloves off. Yeah. Yeah. I love going to to like a fighting match and hoping that a hockey game breaks out. Like I, I want to. Have you ever gone to like UFC? No. I, I would. I would go to that. I would. I would I, go to that. I, I've been getting more and more just like into that. Like I they go through TikTok enough and you're like, okay, like there's that guy, Israel Adesanya. And the only reason I know him is because he he did like Naruto poses and stuff. Oh, is that like a kind of lengthy black dude? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. know yeah. who you're talking no, about. He was a beast. I keep going with this. Sorry. 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 Yeah, you're good. Uh, racquetball. What is the fuck is that? What is racquetball? It's just like where, where you hit a ball. Off the glass? Oh, yeah. Is that like off the wall? Yeah. Okay. I guess no. Uh, uh, roller skating. Uh, running general. Running in general? <laughs> He's got both legs. He's got both legs. He can do that shit. <laughs> general. Running long distance. Running sprint. Skateboarding. I don't know how to do that. Snorkeling. I've already told you I hate water. <laughs> I, I, I hate water. Uh, soccer, swimming ability, general, swimming, diving, swimming, freestyle, tennis, volleyball, comedian. She just put comedian on there. This is, is, do you think this is a thing where she's like looking at a list and it's like click all that apply? Yeah. And she's just going down. Yep. She's okay. like, my baby can do all this. <laughs> my, my baby's so talented. Uh, he's good at pole dancing. Apparently <laughs> he's good at fucking pole dancing. I can also do uh, I'm a teleprompter. I'm a model. <laughs> I uh, I can play the harmonica and I can belly dance. Oh, and play the bongos. <laughs> That's so fucking talented, I, dude. I, I dude, I amaze myself. I didn't even know I could do these things, man. I was wondering why, like, every time I go into an audition, they're like, "Where's the hacky sack?" <laughs> Bro, like, I don't. You know, I mean, that seems like it would be so stressful. Mm -hmm. Is if you go into an audition and they're like, okay, so it says uh, that you can hacky sack. We, this actually, this role needs it. Yeah. Show uh, us, show us some of your moves. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you, you do it and it turns out like you're just a natural. You're like, you're like, oh, this is yeah, actually. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> you're picking it up. You're like, oh. This and, actually isn't that bad. Yeah. And mom's like, I told you. I knew you could hacky sack. You got both fucking legs. You're goddamn right. So your parents, are they kind of like pushing you to. To do that kind of thing? They're not pushy. They're they're just uh they're very into the arts and stuff. Cool. That's especially great. my mom. So mm -hmm. like whenever I expressed interest in it, she's like, okay, like let's she's she's a momager. She she's the person that sets everything up yeah. for me a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh uh Are you the middle? Middle child? Oldest. Really? How many? How many? Two. Just me and my brother. Okay, okay. And if okay. you've met me, you've met my brother. My really? brother's yeah, we're yeah, to be fair. Sense. If you met me, you've met the whole family. Everyone's kind of similar in my okay. family. I mean, okay, they're I'm all goobers, all funny fucking people. Goobers is a great word. Yeah. Just little gooses. I love the it. Silliest of the geeses. I love them. I thought I, I thought maybe I had like a. We got like two minutes left. You. I don't have a fucking sound button for the thing. I think I have this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good sound. I have that one and this one. Oh. Yeah. That's sick. I got. Sick. I only got. I don't have that many on this little sound pad, but interesting. So okay, so um, when you told him, have you told him like I want to do stand up or you? Or how does that thing go? Well, they want me to do stand up. They want like, and I'm. I've always said like I will eventually, but like my mom, like we have you ever seen Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's such a good, it's such a good show. It's about a woman in the fifties who becomes like a comedian. It's loosely based off of Joan, uh, Joan Rivers, I think. Okay. Uh, and we watched that together. And so she like, after watching that, she was like, she knows what it takes to be a comedian. So like her momager form comes in and she's like, you need to do these, have this many open mics a week. Uh, I'll get you like she wants to get me an agent and like, and Aww, I'm like dude that's fucking nice huh hey I love her to death yeah. uh, but it, I'm also like I'll come to you whenever uh, I'm ready to do yeah, that yeah. shit that makes uh, sense but yeah no she's a good mother yeah she hopefully she's listening <laughs> I love you mom I love you <laughs> all right dude this is a 
I want to start wrapping this thing up. All right. We're, we're, we've done really good timing. Get to reading our feminist literature. I got it. <laughs> Still recording, right? They heard that? Yeah, they heard that. They heard that. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Since I hit the cameras twice, we have to do another ad read. Is there one in particular you want to do? I don't care. Okay, we'll hop into our, another ad. But before you do that, I always have the guest tell the audience where they can follow you. Uh, how to get in contact with you if you want them to, any of that kind of thing. Um, you can follow me on, I guess, my my Instagram, Jacob underscore Andrews with two S's. That is J-C-O-B-A underscore A-N-D-R-E-W-S-S. You can follow me. Uh, I have some YouTube videos that I, I posted a while back. Uh, if you're into like stick figure animated history videos, I have some over pirates that we were talking about on the show. Uh, they're, they're really good. Yeah. They are worth the watch. Uh, and they're informative. If you have a test coming up, I have all yeah. of my sources in the description. Uh-huh. I, I, I'm not I'm not a type of person to say this is what happened and then give you no source whatsoever. Credible. Uh, That's what he stands on. Credibility. Uh, yeah. And and it's engaging and fun to watch. Dude, I'm like the NPR of history. Yeah, dude. That's a fun <laughs> way to put it. And the the visuals are fun. Yeah. I like them. But no, I, I, I don't do too much anymore. I want to get back into it. I have a few videos written out. But yeah, no, that's usually that's about all I, I can do really in terms of where you can find me because I'm kind of like a ghost. Mm, I would like to be. I was thinking about going to the flip phone. Going back to the flippy? Yeah. That's dramatic. Well, because I feel like I'm on the phone too much, man. I know. I feel like I'm on it too much. No, but I love it. <laughs> I, dude, I get into a Twitter argument or something like that. Oh, dude, I haven't gone on X in a long time. I just, I'm all on the Instagram and TikTok, just scrolling through the reels, just the videos, man, of people doing dumb shit. I love it. Dude, I watch people. Hours. Like, well, I watch people like mow lawns <laughs> and stuff. Yes. On, just like a crisp lawn mow. The and satisfactory just, videos, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I love mm-hmm. I love a good lawn mowing, man. Yeah, I, dude. It, when they edge up the sides, I'm like, yeah, no, this is sick. I, and I don't know what I'd do without it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm like, man, I feel too de- dependent on. But anyway, I'm getting fucking off yeah. topic. All right, go follow him. We got to do another fucking ad read real fast. But hey, man, it was a pleasure having you on. No, dude, this is fun. This is super time. fun. I had a great time. I totally, dude. If you ever need an extra guest to do this again, totally. I would love to have you on again. This would be awesome. I want to have you on again after. Um, after um some comedy okay. some comedy because yeah. i would like to i would like to talk about um either people's sets but i don't want to like out them but just kind of like how they did or how would you do it differently or that kind of thing like break break down the comedy a little bit more yeah we'll bring a little notepad i love it dude dude they'll know that'd be terrifying if you're up there and some dude's taking notes on you uh-huh you immediately oh. think they're talent agents and stuff oh that sucks dude, me and my brother did that in denver really we'd go to different open mics and we would go hmm <laughs> we go mm, that was pretty good and right dude we weren't writing anything down we were just oh. scribbling oh we we're just larping Every, do you think everyone there is wanting an agent oh yeah yeah anyone who really wants to do it some people just do it because they're like i have a day free whatever mm-hmm. i'm just gonna go do some comedy it's yeah. just like a, a release yeah i feel it's like spoken uh, some people do spoken word poetry you know yeah so, no yeah not for me not for me i'm not into that I'd rather do, yeah, spoken word comedy. I'm into, the, I'm into the comedy. Yeah. All right. It was a pleasure. Let's do this thing. Until next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Love you all. Have a great day. Love you. Bye.